Welcome back to another tutorial brought to you by Ants101. Today we're going to talk about what and how to feed your ants while living in a test tube setup. So the first thing we're going to talk about is sugar and how much and when to feed it to your ants. We will also be going over some of the best choices to feed them. Again, with protein, we're going to talk about how much and when you want to feed it, as well as some of the best uh, options out there. Assuming your ants are still living in test tubes, as seen here, this feeding only needs to take place one to two times a week, maybe even once every two weeks, as their numbers are still very fairly small. All right, we're going to start with sugars. So. Sugars, providing your ants with sugar is important because it gives nutrient or it gives energy to the worker ants to be able to complete their day-to-day -day activities. A fairly reliable sign that you're not giving your ants enough sugar is they'll be acting very slow or sluggish. So if your ants are acting slow or sluggish, you may want to give them more sugar. Now on to some of the sugars that I think are the best. And one is honey because it's so it's thick enough that it is actually pretty difficult for your ants to drown in it, and it contains actually a lot of sugar, so it's an all-around favorite. And secondly, believe it or not, maple syrup works very well. It is a little runnier, so it's a little harder co to control, but um, it is readily accepted with most ant species. Another way is to put um, fruit, cut fruit, sliced fruit into their outworld and uh, this actually is a very useful way if you don't have test tubes because you can provide sugar and water at the same time. Now onto protein and it's important to provide your ants with protein because protein, it has other purposes among the colonies but its main purpose is to um, aid the larva development. So. The larva is going to need a lot of protein when they're developing. Not so much the other stages, but they'll also require some as well. And a fairly reliable sign that you're not giving your ants enough protein is that their, if their larva are taking a really long time to develop into pupae, if at all. Of course, all of this only applies if your queen has workers. If, she, if her workers haven't hatched yet, you don't have to feed her and she'll raise them. Once the first workers arrive, um, you'll probably wait maybe four or five days, then you can start feeding them. This is my Lysias Neoniger queen. Uh, as you can see, she has a metric crap ton of eggs. Now onto some of the best protein sources, and um, superworms and mealworms are actually really good. Uh, then in the next video, I'll show you how you can actually keep superworms. I'm the, the same will apply if you have mealworms, but definitely those are something to look into if you're keeping ants because they provide lots and lots of nutrients and they're fairly easy to keep. Some nuts, some dried fruit, and even an egg can be used as a protein source. Now on to actually inserting the food into the test tube. In this case, I'm just using sugar, but the same would apply whether you're using a sugar or protein or really anything like that. All right, next you're just gonna pop your lid off, whether you're using a cover or if you're using cotton, simply pull the cotton out. Then grab your tweezers with the honey. Just move that out. You don't want an escaping ant, so try to be careful and know fast movements because it might spook them and they may come running that would not be good so just place the sugar or whatever in there close up the cover and you're good to go you can put your cover back on leave them alone and they will eventually find discover it and begin eating i'll soon be creating a video on how to keep a uh, superworm so That'll be coming out soon, but thanks for watching. If you enjoy my content, please uh, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.